What's up, yo? Shout style. Another random. God damn, I need to stop saying that because <laughs> it's not a fucking random video. I actually planned this shit. Excuse me, I'm fixing the mic. I did that in the last video too. I'm like, oh, it's a random video. No, it's not. Fucking dumbass. I actually planned this out. <laughs> so, yeah, look at me. I'm actually putting effort in my videos somewhat. I just woke up, so forgive me. I'm not spunky. I'm getting my coffee. Yeah. All right, so. I showed you how I create my sequence in the sense I've, I sync my files using Pluralize. Once that sequence is synced, I import it into Premiere Pro. All the footage comes in. And like I got my, as you can see here, here's a sync sequence. I double click and that's pretty much what we're seeing right here. After that video, part one, and part two, I showed you how I use proxies to help me speed up my workflow, right? We ported the footage, we got our, you know, our files all synced up and ready to go, and we also made the proxies uh, to help us edit faster, right? So we can have a more smoother playback uh, while we're editing. That way, you know, our CPU is not lagging behind and, you know, we can just, you know, cut and, you know, edit as fast as we need to be. So we got our footage here. Now, so pretty much what I'm going to do now, and which, what I'm going to show you is basically how I, how I cut the like, spaces in between the footage, right, to compact everything and then create a multicam sequence now now the first thing we want to do is as you can see here this is a mono audio file lavalier mics or just say like this mic in general that i'm speaking towards it records it in a mono format so it only creates one audio file so both left and right here are using the same audio file they're not separated so what we want to do is we want to create a stereo because usually by itself it doesn't sound good you just gotta have it in stereo it sounds more fuller more louder more clear whatever so what you gotta do is find this guy you can right click modify then audio channels then right here, pretty much in the clip channel format, we want to set it to stereo. Now we click on the right. So pretty much it's going to like split the audio files into left and right. So it's going to say that change of this clip from when I was in the timeline, hit OK. Go back to your timeline, hit home. It takes you to like the beginning, kind of zoom in there and drag in your newly corrected stereo the audio file on top of this guy. Make sure it matches, right? And then let go. And there you go. All right, cool stuff. Now that we got the audio ready to go, here's the fun part. Now, obviously, we don't need the audio from like the cameras. Uh, I usually get rid of them. So now, in, in my computer and the my layouts, um, I don't know what the default button or the default layout was, but pretty much what I do is like on the on the arrow keys on my keyboard, the up selection it nudges the selection up one layer, whether it's the video layer or the audio layer, right? So see, nudge clip selection up. So in this case, using the arrow keys, I go up one, two. Three. I can't remember what the default was on the keyboard layout, but that's what I do. You know, nudge selection up one or down using the arrow keys, right? I go up, it gets rid of like the audio files. I don't have to like click and delete anything. What we want to do is basically we want to start trimming everything. So we want to make sure we just use the audio files here. We don't need this crap. So what we can do is we can get the blade tool, cut, and select. But no, fuck that. We wanted to get shit done fast. So now I have a video where I showed you about my shortcuts. I'll have it set up right on my keyboard. See, the W is uh, go to next edit point. The S is go to previous edit point. So I'm going up. I go down. W, up, S, down, you know, to move the timeline. Now, another command that I use is basically at edit to all tracks. So pretty much what this does is wherever your playhead is at, it's going to make a slice through everything that's pretty much right underneath the playhead, right? So I have that as shift control alt K. Now, that's a long command, right? But I have it set up on my uh, my Rocket Nith mouse. So I just push one button on my uh, Rocket Nith and it adds it, right? So I'll make these guys big so you can see. I'm going to shift control alt K. Hit W to go up to the next edit point. Control Shift Alt K to slice. S to go back. Control Shift Alt P to select what I just sliced. Then Shift Delete to do a ripple delete. Now that's a lot, obviously, but that's why I set up a macro so it does it all for me. So all this, all this commands I just did. I just push one button now. It's all like, oop. Uh, this is very important as well. See these guys here on the side? Make sure everything is selected. Basically, what you're telling Premiere Pro is basically all the commands that I'm using right now, it's directed towards everything that's in the timeline. Because if like, uh, say if you have one, these guys up here not selected. And if I was to do my commands, you'll see that how like it's skipping this section here? Because it's totally ignoring these guys up here because the target selections are off. If I have these on, see now like pretty much I'm using my commands and it's jumping between these guys here. So make sure you have everything selected. All your targets are selected. And in my case, when I'm doing my editing, editing like this. I have all the targets on. I'm going to use my macro. Select. I'm going to go up. 
macro up macro in this case i want to go up here pretty much i'm just going towards the areas where there's no video macro up macro macro i'm gonna zoom out so macro macro nothing's fine there blah 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 blah, blah, blah. macro 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 must be annoying macro up 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 macro 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 delete that gap so there you go now i got rid of all my gaps these are b-roll shots i don't need them right now i'll delete them and there you go and just like a few clicks pretty much i got rid of all the gaps super awesome right <laughs> Now that that part is done, the next part is basically we need to create a multicam. So uh, when I edit, I try to be as clean as possible in the sense like only have very few layers, right? Because like if you have layers on top of layers, uh, for me, it becomes too much, right? So what I do is basically I pack all these together and I create a multicam. So what you do is once you're done uh, getting rid of like the gaps. Also, by the way, this guy's a link selection. So I say if like these two guys were linked, let me right click and say link. So if I click the top, because these two are linked, if you want to just select one individually, you can uncheck this guy up here. And what that will do is like, they'll just select like the video clip. That way you're not like messing with the audio file. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to select all my footage, only the footage, leave the audio alone. Once everything is selected, right click, and I'm going to hit nest. So in this case, I'm going to name it main nest tutorial. Hit OK. Boom. Now, see, instead of having like three layers of video footage, it's all in a nest. However, if I was to double click on this guy, it goes into another, the nest sequence, and it shows you here, everything's in this uh, layer. You know, we got three layers. Main camera is in layer one, secondary camera in layer two, and the top down camera in layer three. And the cool thing about that is basically each layer, each video layer represents a camera. So when we create our multi-camera, pretty much now I only have to worry about three layers, which is three cameras. So once you create your nest, select it, right click and create multi-camera enable and as you can see here in the front of like the name of the clip name it says mc1 so it says multi-camera i usually do everything with commands but i want to make sure you guys follow along so pretty much i'm using a lot of like uh i go to like the file menus and you know, whatnot because i want to make sure you guys see where things are at once you guys are familiar you guys can create your own shortcuts okay so uh, scrubbing through the timeline you're like what the fuck how come there's black spots here well you want to go to your program window, go on the wrench here, click on that. You want to select the multi-cam feature. And there you go. So the cool thing is basically, say like in this case, it's playing, right? Here's like the first camera. It's opening and yada, yada. And oh, it switches to the secondary camera. So in this case, jumps here. So you can do two things. You can actually select a command to like jump to the secondary camera, or you can just click here in the program window and it selects it. Now, this is where you want to be careful, right? I just selected the second camera, but I deselected the camera in the first part. So now it's black. So you got to do two things. One, either you can either add an edit. So you can use a blade if you want. You can make a cut here. And then you select this section and you hit number two. Then on the previous clip here, you select number one. So now like, see, these clips are separated. You know, it jumps from one to another. Or what I do is basically I have a hotkey. And my hotkey is basically cut to camera one, cut to camera two, cut to camera three. Since we use three cameras, it's mainly I use. And for those that have it set up to shift, control, alt. Again, I use these crazy combinations because I use macros for my uh, command. So I have it control, shift, alt, one. It jumps to one. Play it a bit. I could do control, shift, alt, three. The thing about that is like as you're playing, when you use the commands and then jump to uh, another camera, it makes the cut. It makes the cut and it jumps to like that camera. So pretty sweet, right? Now, one of the tools that I like to use is basically the Logitech. G13. Using those shortcuts that just showed you that I use is the, the control shift alt one or two or three, you know, to jump between cameras. Pretty much I have that set up on my Logitech. However, the other thing I have set up is basically when it creates say, a cut to another camera, say in this case, control shift alt three. Also, I have it set up to select the edit points. In this case, that shortcut is contr shift control alt n, select nearest edit point as roll. That's what I do. Shift, Control, Alt, N. As you can see, it selects this. Now I do a Control D to apply default transitions, and that applies it to solve. So in this case, say if it's plain, uh, let's go to one. I'm using I'm using my Logitech this time. Uh, stop there. I want to go three. Play. Uh, can you go to two? And if you want, I mean, you can play it real time, and as you're playing, you can add the the cuts two, three. So it has the cuts in real time, but like, I don't know. I personally don't like doing that because like one, as you can see, it didn't end my transitions because it didn't stop at the playhead. 
right? And also, um, I don't know, I usually like to edit according to like the audio file, right? So if Paul makes a stop or a break or depending on what he says, I'll make a transition to another cut, right? Yeah, so for the most part, I'd say like when he's eh, when he's doing something, like I just use my Logitech to go to camera one. Say, yeah, I'll stop there, go to camera one. It makes a cut, it has a transition. Say I want to stop there, go to camera two. Again, I'm using the commands on my Logitech. It makes a cut and it adds a transition. So it saves me time because I don't have to worry about editing these transitions anywhere. And it does like a quote cross dissolve. See, so yeah, I was able to like cut between three cameras because I only has three layers instead of a big jumble fucking mess, you know, I'll scatter all the load place. Um, again, I guess there's a way to fix that, but um, I haven't looked into that yet. But at the moment, see, this works for me. So, so again, you know, one, two, so yeah, see that's cool because like, you know, using my shortcuts and my macros pretty much and using the multicam function here, uh, not only am I able to have less less virtual cameras to jump in between because I only have three layers of footage, that's three cameras. So with my commands and my macros, I'm able to like do a cut and it selects that cut and it adds a cross dissolve, right? So it's more of like, instead of being like a jump cut, there's like a nice transition from one camera to another, right? So that's it, I'm gonna end the video right here. Hopefully it helps out, you know, please check out the links below. If, if my videos help me out, you guys can help me out as well i do appreciate that so i'm gonna keep this going uh in the next video i'm gonna show you pretty much like uh how i edit using like the audio files but most importantly i think uh something i recently discovered is basically how to cut out more of like the dead gaps <laughs> all right there's like my second video in a row that differed today so yeah uh...